is x i all of them are some mean and variance uh, both of them in general could be unknown and uh, we have independent identically distributed samples uh, n samples of gaussian data so that the joint density function of course is we have gone through this several times So uh, again, if you expand this, uh, this one as sigma xi squared minus 2 mu sigma xi plus n mu squared, the numerator. Uh, so you can see this and uh, this form the uh, sufficient statistics. So of course, if only mu is the only unknown, then just this is the sufficient statistics. But if both are unknown, you have uh, uh, and if uh, mu is known and sigma squared is unknown, then you can see again, just this is the sufficient uh, statistics, because that's where the, so you have two of them, sigma xi, i equal to one through n, and uh, say t2 is uh, sigma xi squared. And T1 is, of course, uh, this being independent Gaussian, this is also Gaussian. And so if I do the standard mean, which is same as t, uh, a scaled version of T1, and this is Gaussian uh, with the mean mu, and the variance is uh, the sum of the variance divided by n squared, so that's sigma squared over n. It's a classic result. So I'll come to the other one quickly. And so we have, as I was, uh, saying we have three problems. I mean, we'll consider it this way. Uh, so mean is uh, esti best estimator for mean, a parameter is sigma squared variance, parameter is standard deviation. So in all these cases, we need the uh, best estimator and then uh, uh, one way or the other way, we need to convince whether it's an efficient estimator or one with the minimum variance, etc. So from what we know, if we can find out an unbiased estimator in terms of the sufficient statistics, then we are done. We know that it's, uh, that's the best estimator. You just need to compute its variance, and you can compare with the Kramer raw bounds to see how, what is the uh, measure of uh, how, uh, how far it is away from uh, being a efficient estimator, etc. So this, you know, is easy because uh, theta hat for problem one, uh, theta hat is uh, x bar because it's uh, mean is mean, uh, mean is mu, and uh, so mean of uh, this is uh, mu, and its variance is sigma squared. Uh, so if you do the, uh, So from here, log f is, uh, to do the Kramer row bound, log f is uh, minus n by 2 log 2 pi sigma squared minus xi minus mu the whole squared over 2 sigma squared. So if you take the derivative with respect to mu, notice that this term will go away. So that's... Uh, Minus uh, two also goes away. So xi minus mu the uh, whole two goes away. Two sigma squared be, uh, summation and uh, minus minus because of this minus this becomes plus. So when you take the derivative again, so derivative one more time because of this summation i equal to one through. Here you get n over sigma square with a minus sign. So this gives the Kramer row bound to be. So from here, the Kramer row bound for uh, mu is minus 1 over 
expected value of this is that that simply turns, there's nothing to expect it here, so that's simply sigma squared over n. Notice that this agrees with the variance of this estimator. Consequently, this is an efficient estimator, right? So the sample, classic result, sample mean is efficient for the mean. So let's look at the estimators for sigma squared. And here we have to consider two cases. So here you have two cases, uh, mu known, uh, mu unknown. So mu, uh, so this is 2a and 2b, let's say. So mu known is easy because if I consider, uh, let's say y equal to, remember mean is known. So I take the data, let's say I take this one. I take the data, subtract the mean, square it, and add up all the, and divide by n. So this is like a sample uh, variance, if you want, you can call it. So you can easily see that expect, so let me call it theta two. So this is theta one. This is uh, theta two hat. So expected, you can see expected value of, anybody? What is expected value of theta two hat, anyone? So that's the expected value of this quantity. This is by definition the variance of xi, right? That is sigma squared. And you are adding a bunch of independent random variables. So uh, anyway, we are just taking expected value. So that is n sigma squared. n and n will cancel. So that's an unbiased estimator. That's the reason I put n there, right? So we can compute its variance. So you can do it a couple of different ways. Maybe with a little probability, you know that this is a zero mean Gaussian, right? This is a zero mean Gaussian, but variance sigma squared, right? So if I consider this random variable, this is zero mean with variance one, because the variance of the top divided by sigma squared, variance one. So if I square it, uh, this becomes uh, chi squared with one degree of freedom. And these are independent random variables. So if you keep adding independent chi squared, and uh, this becomes chi squared with n degrees of freedom. And so if I call this random variable to be y, uh, standard result uh, y, uh, the mean of y is, uh, y bar is uh, n, and this is 2n. So we can just use that result here. So how will you, so remember, I want the variance of this. So what you should do is, our estimator is, we should uh, multi uh, multiply this with sigma squared, right? And divide this by n. So we want the variance of, this is equal to, you can see, uh, theta 2 hat, right? Yes? So this is theta 2 hat. So the variance of this is sigma 4 over n squared multiplied by variance of y. Variance of y is 2n, so this gives you sigma 4 over n squared variance of y, which is uh, 2n. So n and cancel, so you get 2n over sigma 4. So, so that's good. And uh, finally, if you want to see the Cremero amount there, so you just take the derivative of this with respect to sigma squared. So I'm going to call sigma squared to be a para some parameter, theta. Because we have to take the derivative with respect to, so I need a log of with respect to sigma, uh, with respect to sigma squared. So that's minus n by two sigma, uh, two theta, right? Because two pi is a constant, that goes away. So here minus uh, xi minus mu the whole squared over 
2 sigma squared, right? This becomes plus. So if you take the derivative one more time, I'll do it here, or let me do it the next step. So this becomes uh, plus n over, what is it, 2 sigma squared? And this becomes sigma xi minus mu the whole squared over 2, 2 cancels, so that becomes minus uh, 2, 2 cancels, 3 theta cubed. So now let me substitute for theta. Theta is sigma squared. So this is sigma 4, sigma 6. Now let me do expected value here. Expected value, of the expected value is only here. Expected value of each of them is sigma squared. So this numerator becomes n sigma squared, right? Sigma squared cancels, you get sigma 4. So you can see the answer is n, n over 2 sigma 4 minus n over uh, sigma 4. So that's minus n over 2 sigma 4. So the variance is, I mean, the Cremerov bound is the flipped version of this. So sigma squared CR. So the Cremerov bound for the parameter the sigma squared is a minus 1 over expected value of the second derivative of the logarithm with respect to the parameter. And that's just a flipped version of this, so that's 2 sigma 4 over n. Uh, look at here. Uh, here, right? Yeah, why did I get See, sigma, yeah, this should be sigma 4 over. Right, because we had a 2n there, right? 2n, 2n sigma. 2n, uh, so n n cancels, you have 2 sigma. So this agrees with the Gramer Rao bound. So again, we conclude that uh, this is an efficient estimator. Which one? So this is efficient. say this is efficient, this is efficient, everything looks efficient. That is not true. So let's look at 2b. So that's a little harder. <laughs> but mu already we know the answer. Mu hat, the best estimator for mu hat is uh, x bar here. So that is true because this will, uh, this will go through whether sigma squared is known or unknown. And we know that that's uh, uh, that's Gaussian with uh, these parameters. So we want an unbiased estimator for sigma squared uh, just from data. So look at the idea here. So you could say uh, uh, this would look at here. If mu is known, you can use this, right? If mu is not known. Remember, we can hit and trial. We can try uh, substituting x bar here and see what happens. So let me call uh, So all I did was replace this mu. This is also the maximum likelihood procedure when you do not know the parameter. X bar is anyway the maximum likelihood estimator for uh, mu. So we substitute, or in any case, you can substitute it. I'm not saying it will be an unbiased. Let's see what happens. So that's, a, that's an idea, right? And since we have uh, multiple data points, you can uh, try this also and see what. Uh, so we need to find out its uh, mean and variance. Mean, uh, and if it turns out to be some constant multiplied by sigma squared, then we can take care of the constant. So to do this, let me give you a, re a result, which is where uh, so this is a bit unusual because, see, look at this. This is like saying uh, uh, the, uh, the 
second random variable is a function of the first random variable. So in general, they should be dependent on random variables. So this is interesting because they are independent. I'm going to show you they are independent. Remember, if I take arbitrary, uh, even if <coughs> I take a random variable x, and then say x minus y and x are generally going to be dependent because both depend on x, y bar, right? <coughs> so many ways you can do this. Let me use the characteristic function. So this is by definition e to the power j x bar u plus x bar minus xi v, right? So this is e to the power j x bar is what? Uh, x bar is uh, xj, right? u i equal to 1 through n plus summation xj j equal to 1 through n minus xi multiplied by v. Yes, this is just by definition, right? So you see, look at the logic. This random variable is associated with the u. This random variable is associated, this whole random variable is associated with the variable v. I'm just showing you ideas. So anytime you want to show two random variables are independent, if you can show that this function ultimately splits into u and v, then they are independent. That's what I am going to show. So phi of uh, uv, So let's uh, expand it one more. I'm going to collect all the u terms together. All right, so remember it was x bar. So there is a one over n here, right? There is a one over, I'm going to put it here, one over n. Same thing here, there is a one over n here, right? So, So let me take the xi terms. Xi, there is an xi here. Look here. There is an xi here. There is an xi here. There is an xi here. Right? So I hope you see that what is it? u plus v over n minus v multiplied by xi. Is that right? Look here. u over n, v over n with xi, and then another xi with uh, this. And then all the summation terms plus summation on j not equal to i because I took care of i. You have u plus v over n. So I just rewrote the, uh, why did I do this? I wanted to separate out the random variables which are, uh, the xi's are independent. Look here, on the left side I only have xi. On the right side I have all the other random variables, all, all these random variables are independent. So you can write one more line. This characteristic function becomes uh, the product of the characteristic functions. Here, remember, xi is, xi is somewhere here, right? Xi is Gaussian with the mean, mu, and variance sigma squared, each of them. So let me substitute the result. Remember, the characteristic function of Gaussian is what? Here, characteristic function of any xi is e raised to j mu u minus half sigma squared u squared, right? So here u is this whole, or let me simpl simplify it one more step. So this becomes e to the power j u over n. Look at here. Here minus v multiplied by n minus 1 over n multiplied by xi e to the power j 
And here you have n minus 1 random variables. All of them are independent, so I can take it outside j not equal to i up to n, e to the power expected value of j u plus v over n xj, right? Yes? And now let me use this result on each one of them, step by step. So this is e, uh, e to the power j u over n minus v multiplied by n minus 1 over n, right? Mu minus half uh, square of that, u over n minus v multiplied by n minus 1 n squared sigma squared. Uh, then e to the power this. All of them are identical, so we will multiply that with n my Each one of them is what? e to the power minus j half uh, u plus v over n squared sigma squared, but n minus one of them. So it will be this. So let me just put the u, u terms and v terms together. What? This one? That's here. Yeah, yeah, so this is wrong, right? OK, that's good. So this is going to be j u plus v over n mu, right? Minus half, OK, there is also an n minus 1 here, because there are n minus 1 such terms. I, I, I'm just going so to save space. I'm going to continue here. So this will be plus j multiplied by u plus v over n multiplied by n minus 1 mu minus half u plus v over n squared n minus 1 sigma squared. Yes? So let's put down the u terms, etc. Now let's look at u terms and see v terms and see. There, remember, look at here, there is a square, so there is going to be u v terms. That's, so u over n here, u over n, look here, u over n multiplied by n minus 1. Uh, so that will become what? Anybody? What will be the u term? U, u, divided, u over n plus u multiplied by n minus 1 over n. So that becomes just u. Can you see that with the u terms, right? So that's all. So I took care of this term, and I took care of this term. Now let me go to this u squared term. So I have u squared over n squared here. And then I have Uh, plus, from here, u squared multiplied by n minus 1 over n squared, right? So that gives you, if you add it up, n and cancel, so you get u, u squared over n. So that's with a minus, uh, where am I, here. So that will be minus half u squared uh, sigma squared over n. So that's, uh, that's all the u terms, okay? So I took care of this square, I took care of this u. Now you have a, I'll come to the v squared term, but let me take care of the uv term. Look at here, when you expand here, you get a minus 2uv n minus 1 over n squared. Look at here, when you expand here, you get 2uv over n squared multiplied by n minus 1, sigma squared. So the cross term cancels. And then we have the v squared and the v term. So let me look at the v term. v is what? v over n multiplied by n minus 1 with a minus sign. And here, v n minus 1 over n with a plus sign. 
So this cancels also. There is, so there is no V term. This cancels with this term. And then finally, we just have to see how much is the V squared term. So V squared is here. So you have V squared multiplied by n minus 1 the whole squared over n squared from here. And from here you have V squared n minus 1 over n squared. So if you add this n minus 1 you can pull out. Then you have an n and n cancel. So this will be minus half. So you can write this as multiplied by e raised to my, um, so no v term. So that's the, I'm going to get rid of all this if you are convinced. I took care of all the terms. I took care of the cross terms also. The, so you, the big break you got was the cross term canceled out. Now look at this. So this is the characteristic function. This must be the characteristic. So this is how you deduce results. So you have a big uh, sweeping result in one shot. So this is a reasonably uh, important. This is only good for Gaussian, uh, independent, identically distributed Gaussian random variables. You have x bar and x bar minus xi are independent. Uh, this i, of course, goes from 1 through n. So what does this conclude? Look, the first conclusion is this we already knew. What is it? He's asking why is the characteristic function of the second value equal Because this is, uh, this is the, look at here. You started with uh, a joint characteristic function. We got everything involving you so that must be one characteristic function you know, this is the only this is the only part involving v so this has to be uh, 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 this has to be the part involving v is the characteristic function of v but the interesting thing is this has become a product that means this random variable and this random variable are independent in one sweep we can also do it through the time domain but uh, this is through the, this is one use of the characteristic function anyway. Uh, so what it means is, look at here, this is Gaussian, and there is no J term here, look here. There is no J term, so this mean is zero, that's the important thing. So this is zero mean, and its variance is here, variance is sigma squared multiplied by n minus one over n. So I'll complete the lemma here. The lemma says x bar and x by are independent uh, with, uh, we just proved it, x bar being Gaussian with mean, mu, and variance sigma squared over n, which we knew. But what we didn't know is that this is also Gaussian, which we knew this is Gaussian, but uh, mean zero, which we, you can't see from, uh, I guess you can see mean is zero, but the variance is sigma squared over n minus 1 over n. But you certainly cannot see why they are independent here. Okay. Uh, so the lemma is just approved. Okay. So look here. X bar minus xi, either way, So this quantity is mean, I mean, I'm normal with a zero mean. So if I square it and take the expected value, what do you get? Anybody? If I square it and take the expected value, that's the variance, right? So that variance is given to be, look here, sigma squared multiplied by n minus 1 over n. So if I add a n i of them, what happens to the variance? Anybody? what happens to the expected value. All these are independent random variables, so the expected value of this is n times the expected value. So n cancels. 
So we have the expected we have the expected value of this quantity. Expected value of this quantity is sigma square multiplied by n minus one. Right? So now you can see that is your y. Look here. This is your y. So how will you get an unbiased estimator from here? Anyone? N minus one. So the statisticians, you have a special term for that. Uh, that's uh, uh, they call it. Uh, so let me start from here. So you notation, not term, a notation. They use yes, so I'm going to use yes. Look at uh, look at here. I'm dividing not by n. I'm going to divide that by n minus one. So remember, this is not n minus 1. There don't be confusion. This goes from i through 1, 1 through n. But the division, so you should see here, when mean is known, here we are dividing by n. Look here. And uh, this is all not arbitrary. When mean is uh, unknown, you divide by n minus 1. Then this becomes an unbiased estimate, right? Is that clear? Expected value of S is, uh, what is the expected value of S? Anybody? Sigma squared, because look here, this quantity, uh, we just went through this, right? If you divide this by this, so expected value of X is sigma squared. So what we have done is we have found an unbiased estimator. But then again, from Rao Blackwell theorem, this uh, because the estimator only involves T1 and T2, it's uh, uh, because, yes, also you can write it as sigma xi minus x bar, the whole squared, is the same as what? Sigma xi squared minus x bar squared, right? Right? So it only involves t1 and t2. Right, when, I, when you expand this, what do you have? It's a, it's a sigma xi squared, remember three terms, but it will get a, a divide to this. So this is the best estimator. So let me just find its variance. So to find its variance, So I can certainly write like this, right? X bar. Remember, I want to find the variance, so I'm just going to show you one more. Uh, So if you expand this, what if you expand here, you get summation i equal to 1 through n, x bar minus mu the whole squared, minus summation xi minus mu the whole squared, right? Mm -hmm. huh? yes. Oh yeah. What is the cross term? Minus 2 sigma xi. 
x bar minus mu, right? Plus sigma whole squared, right? Now uh, look at here. This you can do mentally. So this is the same as n x bar minus mu the whole squared. And here to let me multiply and divide by n. Then what happens? So when I uh, this becomes uh, the summation goes inside. Then this becomes n mu. So you pull out an n outside. So you should be able to see that uh, like this, right? Yes. Because this n will cancel here, this is n mu. But this is x bar again. So this becomes x bar minus mu multiplied by x bar minus mu. So I hope you see that multiplied by x bar minus mu. So this becomes 2n x bar minus mu squared. Here you have uh, n x bar minus mu the whole squared. So this is going to be sigma xi minus mu the whole squared. What was it? Minus? Yeah. Huh? Yes? So let me uh, rewrite this expression. So I'm just going to put it here. This one. So this is equal to uh, sigma xi minus mu the whole squared. I just copied the last line, that's all. So now I'm going to take this term to the other side. All right, so what do I have here? Uh, Squared, but the question is, how, how many degrees of freedom? Let me just finish. That. Did I make a, any? Uh, okay, so this is equal to we are almost at the end. Uh, hold on. So we know that, look at this, each of these random variables we know. We know this is Gaussian, right? Inside. So the key is that. Uh, earlier, if you look at the lemma, we know that these two random variables are independent. That's the uh, whole point, right? Yes? Let me read here. X bar and Xi minus, uh, so X bar and Xi minus X bar are independent. So the characteristic function of this uh, is the product of the characteristic functions. But, uh, so the characteristic function of this is the characteristic function of this, yes? But the characteristic function on this side is because these two random variables are independent is the product of the characteristic functions, okay? okay. Now, uh, as you said, this is, so I'm going to divide by sigma throughout, and sigma squared throughout. And there is no harm because I'm dividing on both the sides. And then you can see each of this is, this is Gaussian with uh, zero mean and unit variance. This is Gaussian with, uh, so I'm going to bring this n here, sigma over square root of n. So this is Gaussian with the zero mean and unit variance. This is Gaussian, uh, I will uh, <coughs> come to that. But now if you take the characteristic function, you can clearly see 
This is Gauss, uh, this is Gaussian with zero mean unit variance. So squaring is chi squared with the n degrees of freedom. So this is chi squared with the n degrees of freedom. This is chi squared with one degree of freedom. Right? So you can see, uh, so question is what is this? So you can see inter from the characteristic function, you, you can already see that this is chi squared with uh, n minus 1 degrees of freedom. That's what I wanted to conclude, that, that quantity. So if that is the case, this is all we are interested in, because that, that is the, we wanted to find the variance of that. Okay. So what we can just conclude is that sigma xi minus x bar or is uh, chi squared with uh, n minus 1 degrees of freedom, okay. So it's, uh, so what, do you, how do you get S? So S is, so we, uh, we know if I call this quantity to be Z, expected value of Z is n minus 1, and the variance of Z is uh, 2n minus 1, okay. So let me use that to compute the mean, and we, we already know the mean. So what's the relation between S and the Z? Anyone? So what do we do? Z is just this. So Z we divide, Z we multiply by sigma squared and divide by n minus one, we get S. S. So you can see expected value of Z is uh, N minus one. So N minus one cancels, expected value of S is sigma squared as we had before. And this gives you the variance of S, which is what we are looking for, it is sigma four over N minus one, the whole squared, multiplied by variance of Z. But variance of Z is two times the degree of freedom. So this comes out to be two sigma four over N minus one. Look at here. The Kramerov bound is uh, 2 sigma 4 over n. And this is slightly inferior, saying that uh, this is so we have, this is, this is the best estimator, but it is not efficient. That's what I wanted to prove. Okay. All right, so <laughs> let me do the final step, uh, final problem, which is uh, the third case. So I'm interested in sigma, as I said, knowing uh, knowing. Uh, so we can't just do the square root because it, uh, expected value of that may not turn out to be. Uh, so since I, uh, this is theta three. So let's say. Uh, Z is, Z is what? Z is chi squared, right? So this is Z, right? Yeah, Z is chi squared with n minus one degrees of freedom. So the density function of Z is, let me, and uh, we'll see what happens if you, uh, because that's a positive quantity, so I can certainly, so Z is chi squared with n minus one degrees of freedom. So if Z, Z is, uh, see what is happens to expected value of z half. So that's going to be z half multiplied by fzc dz. z goes from zero through infinity because chi squared is like this, right? So this is zero to z. Uh, if I substitute it here, this half and this half goes away. So this becomes e to the power n by two minus one and e raised to minus z by two dz. 
2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 gamma n by 2 minus 1. This is gamma n by 2 minus 1. All right, so I'm going to substitute a new variable. I'm going to call this to be x. So x is z by 2. So z is 2x. So wherever I z is, uh, I'm going to put a 2x. So 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 goes outside. Inside I have, limits are the same. So x to the power n by 2 minus 1. I'm going to pull the constant outside. Constant is uh, n minus 1 by 2. So this whatever is this, as I had here, this is n minus 1 by 2. So this is n minus 1 by 2. This is just a gamma function. Okay. Uh, so here you have e raised to minus x. But remember, look at here, dx is again 2, uh, dz is 2x, two, uh, two 2dx, uh, two so there will be one more 2 here. So what happens? Uh, isn't there, z, z is what? Z is 2. Did I do everything right? Or no? Yeah. Dz is dx. Oh, no, you're right. Dz is 2 times dx, right? I have a square root of 2. Where, where is it coming from? Maybe. Maybe here, right? Did I take care of this? Uh, I didn't, right? Because uh, c to the power n by 2 minus 1. To yeah, everything is good. So this 2 will take care. This will become, because of this 2, this will go away, right? And you can see, because of this, there will be a Square root of 2 where? And the Here. Everybody got this? This is what I'm getting, I guess. And this is by definition gamma of n by 2. Gamma of uh, 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 s is e x to the power s minus 1 e raised to minus x dx, okay. So we get this to be, remember this is not square root, gamma. Gamma of n by 2 divided by gamma of n minus 1 by 2. So where is the relation between z and x? Did I, z and s, did I, yeah, it's right here. So look here. So we got the expected value of z here. So let's see what's the expected value of, uh, so let me substitute it, uh, square root of z is, square root of z, is square root of n minus 1 multiplied by square root of s over sigma. So I'm saying uh, square root of s is uh, square root of 
sigma divided by square. That's fine, but this is also good. <coughs> so from here, this is comes from here, right? So from here, square root of s is sigma divided by square root of n minus 1 square root of z. And we already have expected value of z here. So I'm going to look at the expected value of square root of s. So that's going to be uh, uh, square root of expected value of z, which is I'll put is square root of 2 gamma n by 2 gamma n minus 1 by 2. Hmm? Two. Where is the square root of n minus 1? In the denominator. Yes? So you just uh, get, uh, take this constant to the other side. So we have uh, we have an unbiased estimator for uh, so, so theta three hat is uh, this is square root. And what was S? Uh, I, what I wanted to show is that the whole thing only deals with the data. Finally, if you want, you can get rid of that. Uh, you can square root of n minus 1 would cancel here. So let me write it without that. So square root of n minus 1, you cancel. Then this term will go away. There will be a 1 over square root of 2 here. So that's an unbiased estimator for expected value of theta 3 hat is sigma. So we found an unbiased estimator. Again, by the same logic, it only depends on the sufficient statistics. So that's the best estimator. Uh, you, you think it's just a gamma of the square? The thing that you raised was the gamma. You have to take care of this square. No, look here. Didn't I do it right? Yeah, more than minus one should be like on top. You just raise the Oh, yeah. Uh, so, gamma n minus one stays there, right? Yeah. And gamma n by two stays there. And you just have, uh, is that right? Yeah. That's going to be unbiased, and this depends. And so this is already the arm view. And finally, if you want to find the variance, which I think is easy enough. So let's find the variance of this. So that's going to be the square of this minus the square of the mean, right? So that's going to be Maybe we can do it from here. So this expression is what? This expression is, let me square it. So that's half gamma n minus 1 by 2, gamma by 2, gamma n by 2 squared. Uh, so when I square it, it is just the expected value of this, right? What's the expected value of this? Anybody? The quantity inside. 
Remember, this whole thing is a chi squared with uh, n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So that's going to be sigma squared n minus 1, isn't it? Uh, because you, you have to divide by sigma to get. Uh, so this is expect. This is multiplied by this. That would be the expected value of the quantity. I mean, I'm saying this multiplied by expected value of sigma xi minus x bar the whole square. Right? Uh, this. Uh, and remember, this is your s squared with one more n minus one. This quantity we showed earlier divided by sigma is chi squared with n minus one degrees of freedom. So expected value of this is, you can check, this is n minus one multiplied by sigma squared. So the variance of the unbiased estimator is if I have everything right, n minus 1 by 2 multiplied by gamma of uh, n minus 1 by 2 over gamma of n by 2 squared minus 1. Okay. And if you want the Cramero bound for this, so this is not an this is not going to be an efficient estimator because Cramero bound for sigma is Cramero bound for sigma squared, which we have here multiplied by uh, derivative of sigma with respect to sigma squared, right? So let me call sigma squared to be theta, then sigma is square root of theta, right? So this is the same as d square root of theta with respect to d theta, which is 1 over 2 square root of d theta. So it's a square is square of this, which is 1 over 2, uh, 4 theta. But theta is sigma squared, so that's 1 over 4 sigma squared. So that's going to be uh, this sigma squared for the uh, Cramero bound for sigma squared is here 2 sigma 4 over n multiplied by 1 over 4 sigma squared. Right? So this is the Cramero bound for uh, sigma. Notice here, here the n is in the numerator. Uh, but you can plot it. So this quantity will, you can see as n increase, n decrease, n increases, the, this bound will decrease. This may not decrease as fast. I think you'll see that the, uh, the, this quantity is going to lie here. And this is the uh, sigma squared CR as a function of uh, n. You can plot it and see. So this is certainly, uh, the, so the last two cases are not efficient estimators, okay? And I'll put up these notes for you in the, in the uh, course website.